Oh man, what is going on everybody? Um, I'm here hosting a show tonight at uh, Branch House Tavern. Uh, we do this once a month so far. Um, I'm actually doing the uh, top 10 moments and clips and guests from the past uh, season. And it's been a wild one. Uh, we've grown, we're growing, we're getting bigger names, we're getting um, bigger and bigger. And we're a small channel doing big things. I uh, appreciate you, please subscribe if you have not. Um, yeah, episode 19, season two, here we go. I'm gonna kick it off. 10 is uh, a lovely friend of mine. Please go buy her book. It's called Boys, Booze, and Balderdash. Um, Lindsay Rochelle, we just had a good time. She's a great gal, doing big things, chasing dreams, and she's making them happen. Uh, comedian, author, so we just talk about boys and food, talk about bombing. It's very fun. Uh, check out this. A plug, where can we find your book? So you can find it on Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, Rochelle, it's Michelle with an R, so yeah. R-I-C-H-E-L-L-E yeah. dot com. Um, and it's on there right now. In a couple of weeks, it'll be going on to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, nice. um, all the all the book sites. Um, cool. But that'll be probably like sometime mid to end November. We're wow. gonna launch there before um, the end of the year, really. Oh yeah, before the end of the year. So I think like Black Friday time, it should launch kind of on all of the online retailers. Um, but yeah, it's called Boys, Booze, and Balderdash, and you can follow me on Instagram at Tall Girl Adventures. Because you're a tall girl and you go on adventures. That's, I didn't know how the name wasn't taken by the time I got it. Really? Yeah, I was like, how has no one claimed this? So yeah, I, I, luckily, RyanShrillaComedy.com. Nobody's, nobody's got that. Yeah, number nine. Um, number nine was actually uh, a local comic who hosts, writes a lot of jokes. I, I think he is going to probably be one of the, uh, probably get a career as a joke writer. Uh, his name is Alex Turner. Alex Turner presents. Um, is just a, a this this clip in particular is just a really good example of taking something inappropriate and that's not <laughs> that shouldn't be funny and making it funny. Uh, it was a story about how his friend's dad was mad and it was kind of a family conflict and <laughs> it was involving rock band. I'll let him tell it. Here you go. Okay. There's something that actually happened. Like I had when I was growing up, I had a, a buddy. We'd play a lot of rock band, mm -hmm. and um, his family, his home life wasn't all that uh, great. And we we were having good times. Like I would I would always have a lot of fun playing rock band. But then one day, his dad, like I guess he was like mad at him. And he didn't tell me before I got there. Mm -hmm. Came down. And they got into it, and his dad just kind of started hitting him with the, the rock band drumstick. Oh my god! And so the punchline I've always wanted to say is like, and that's the day I learned I wanted to play the drums. <laughs> like so you're, you've been playing rock band all those years. Yeah. And yeah. His dad beats his kid with a drumstick, <laughs> and you're like, I don't know, I'm just into rock now. <laughs> uh, number eight is actually um, the whole episode, really. Um, Liam Nelson. He is a feature and opener for Dusty Slay, open for Sam Morrill, very funny comic, um, an advocate for Marfan Syndrome. Um, probably gonna have uh, him on my shows uh, again, uh, both comedy and this show, so stay tuned for that. Seven foot tall of nothing but funny, sweetness, great guy. Uh, the whole thing was good, but one in particular, he took me to the restaurant that you see we're at a train. We're inside of a train. It's called the Orient Express. Uh, Asian people don't cancel me. That's just what it's called. And it's a great, a great meal, a great time. We talk about bombing, climbing, doing, you know, just paying your dues. Talking shop with him was very good. So take a look at that. In the venue is one that I like doing where I like a good one. little short yeah. jokes about all. And I can also be like, oh, here's all the places I performed. And here's a little short joke about each one of them. Um, wow. Look at the, that's fun. Brilliant little plug for all the stuff that you at, do. At uh, West Palm, though, like the, the weekend I just did with Dusty, I ended up doing a whole like bit about it. Who's like, humble bragging now? I know. <laughs> I, well, you know, this is an interview with me, Ryan. So uh, I don't know. Do, uh, maybe I'll just, I just want to talk about my comedy. Yeah, my accomplishments. Uh, let's, let's talk about how tall I am. <laughs> The next half hour, um, but no, it's like I did a whole story about a dude who walked into the green room uh, doing cocaine 
uh, and like tried to offer me some after acknowledging that he had heard that I had a no. heart condition. And he was like, come on, man, I'm an EMT. I got you. And I'm oh, like, no. I don't think you can get me from cocaine. Like, I still have a heart condition. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't. Uh, number seven is actually uh, one of my favorite clips that I put out there because A, <laughs> got the most views. That's, that's partly what I like about it. But it was a real moment because we talk race, culture, um, and I have a particular joke about being the only white person in a restaurant and the food being better. And it caused a little bit of kerfuffle. Some of the comments that I got on that, on that one were actually really, really funny and engaging. Um, not in a good way, but we made it fun. So this is that moment, this real talk with, with Khalil. So here we go. Because any time I've ever been to a restaurant and I'm the only white guy, the food has been phenomenal. Of course. Like, and it, it's so good. You gotta be honest, the reverse effect, never true. <laughs> never has it been true. Never have been like, wow, I'm the only black guy here. The food's gonna be amazing. Uh, number six is actually, um, he's now a golfing buddy of mine. Uh, he's a comic who runs shows. He runs Taylor Neely's Riff Raff Comedy uh, down in Atlanta. Uh, you can see him on on shoes everywhere, venues, clubs, you name it. Um, he's actually a professionally by trade, previously a handyman. And I, I, I just had a, some of our famous laughs, the best laughs that we have, are over dumb, stupid shit that we do, say, uh, dicks, farts, blowjobs, those types of things get us giggling the most sometimes, especially as guys. Uh, this is just one of those moments, just a little handy wordplay. Here you go. Well, it's got a little heft 80s cop you yeah. know to it yeah that's good a lot of people say porn stuff so, yeah so we got handlebar mustache hand jobs hand jobs they're Pretty good fast. in like middle school okay that I makes don't sense know. a blow job that is mostly hand job is better okay yeah. a handy blow job yes handy job handy job there you go we just coined something that'll probably catch on more than bite worthy will uh hand the handy <laughs> the <laughs> welcome to handy blow job with Ryan <laughs> <Schiller>. <laughs> the, the handy cap how you feel about the handy cap I golf, so I have a handicap. Uh, uh, number five is actually going to go to my buddy, my new friend uh, in comedy and out of comedy. This guy's going places. He's actually open for April Macy. Um, he's, he's on shows all the time. The trajectory is really good, and he's going to be famous one day. Uh, the whole episode was great, but we just we went back and forth just tag after tag and joke and bat, it just a, a perfect tennis match of two comics talking shop bantering um danny tran look at it i mean the texting thing's not bad i've had a person fall asleep in the front row before i want to show oh no, did you wake uh, him up what'd you do no i just said uh swastika and they woke right up they <laughs> got up hand up and everything it was uh, it's just hey hey <laughs> hey my bad yeah no it's uh dude we used to have so in peoria it'd be like an old it's an old person town right so like 9 p.m. would be the second show. It goes on to like 11. Oh my god! And dude, everyone's already going to bed by then. There's no past that Fox News late yeah. cast. Yeah. Yeah. They took their freaking Xanax. They're ready to go to home. You know, it's like they're knocking out. It's like they're snoring at the set. Like, That's good lord. So crazy. Yeah. Falling asleep at a comedy show. I, I I don't think I've ever done that. I've seen some boring shows, like a feature did 25. All right, number four. Um, actually is, uh, I don't know what I like most about this episode. The fact that I got to take such a beautiful woman to such a nice restaurant or the fact that I got to eat at such a nice restaurant. Uh, this was a good one because um, we were, the episode got a little heavy talking about politics and world events and things. Um, and that's what life is sometimes, often. And so, hey, got a fan. Um, we we talked about uh, actually this is a madhouse over here. We actually talked about uh, Ukraine and, and a lot of different things, but we got on the subject of girls who have sex with comedians, and this little gem came of that. So check this out. Um, but no, I, I think I've seen maybe one one like comedy floozy around and that was like at the we back we call them sorry to interrupt what, what are they what are they called chuckle fuckers chuckle fuckers mm -hmm. that's such a good name mm -hmm. that's quality i know i wonder what other like realms have groupy giggle names gobblers. like giggle gobblers <laughs> <laughs> all right number three is actually um this is a good one because joel byers runs hot breath comedy network 
uh, 12 years in the game, a trophy husband special is out to purchase, very funny. Um, White Boy Joel, as he's known as. I tried to give him some, some shit and grill him, but it didn't work. He was, he gave it right back to me. Uh, when you have a white comedian in particular growing up and doing comedy in black rooms, they are usually not to be messed with in terms of roasting, grilling, making fun of, matching, you know, punch for punch. You probably lose. Um, so here's, here's Joel giving me the business. Yeah. On YouTube, we do a joke feedback hour where it's, comics come and get feedback on their jokes. Yeah, and they vote on it and they win. It's a good little thing. It's yeah, a nice, it's best fun. joke of the day is great. It's a great thing. Um, so you used to look like you sell weed. Now you look like you sell insurance. That's that's a joke that I wrote. That was one of the jokes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So one. How many did you write? Five. Four. Four quickens. Four. Four. And quickens. that one counts as one of the four. It does. Okay. Unfortunately, it does. Okay. Cool. All right. That's my opener. Great. But uh, weed is medicinal now, so that could you maybe could get it with insurance now. You this know? is why you're. This is why you run hot breath. Twist it. You know, these, <laughs> these ain't the days of smoking out of a coke can like you used to. Oh do. man. You know, this yeah. Is, yeah, my options were paper or plastic, like the grocery <laughs> store. That's it. That's All right, number two is actually, um, I had Caleb's own, uh, Caleb, or George's own, sorry, Caleb Sinan. Uh, Sinan, funny. Funny dude, great down to earth, uh, good voice. Um, he's on tour right now. Go to calebsinan.com, I believe is his website. Uh, he has a margarita recipe you should look out for. Um, but talking shop with a professional comic it changes your view on everything. The experience, the wisdom, um, the choice of what to do and when, how to maneuver open mics versus shows, jokes, new jokes, how to punch things up. It was very fun. So this is in particular talk about open mic. This, I still, I still listen to this one to, the day, to this day. I feel that way. Uh, mm. I find open mics really hard now because especially ones when it's a lot of comics because they're very judgmental and uh, especially if you got a credit and then they're just like oh, whatever because then it's like if you show up and do your real material at an open mic in front of a bunch of comics they're like what'd you do that for yeah why and then if you try out new stuff it sucks so yeah, then they're so like just it's not that good win. you just gotta do it yeah yeah and, that's, uh, that's why that's really wise yeah and then you just gotta be cool with it being bad uh, I, I like to try out new jokes in a regular show is my favorite. That's fucking bold. Because then you know what it pays off. It pays off. It's yeah. Like, oh, that immediately. But sometimes the joke will kill for the comics, but then it's not worth anything to a real crowd. All right, and number one, easily, hands down, don't even need anything else. It's Sean Patton. Sean Patton, the best. I think the best comedian that I have ever seen. Um, I think he's, he's my favorite comic. Uh, yeah, because he, he was one of the first to give me advice. Um, he was, he's, he has these long, vivid, descriptive, funny, whimsical stories that are full of, like, I didn't see this coming and experience and great comic. You should go see a special on Peacock, number one. And then also, um, yeah, he's on tour with David Cross right now. Um, just this whole episode. We talk shop over barbecue, so uh, check it out. But that's our episode. Uh, Steve Byrne is on our last episode. Tune in season three. Love you guys. Jokes don't have to just be meaningless setup punch. They can also be idea-driven pieces. Yeah. And then I, and so that's the most fulfilling thing to me is that like I am now and forever on my journey. I, that's that's excellent. I can yeah. you know what I can see that because you do have you have substance to your material, Thank you. and that's I mean that I I've, you throw in you throw in a, a dumb wordplay or a silly joke, sure. that, but that's Why just not? part of, yeah of course huh. but that's part of comedy. I like I like that. I can see how just the create I want to create, and if that funneled into comedy, then. Boy, I'm glad it did. Cause if we didn't, yeah. if we didn't have you, it'd be a sadder, just a sadder state of, of well, stand up. I think definitely less Tony Satchery's out there. <laughs> you sons of bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's that's a really insightful answer, man. I got I got Fuck a few. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. Got a few. In a heartbeat, if I was oh, a CEO. That's but you're... some other. That's why you're not a CEO, because you're a human being. <laughs> yeah, Damn, yeah. Damn. We take down the shots, fucking shots 1%. Fired. Shots fired. Damn. Occupy a barbecue place. All right. Uh, I it's Occupy? <laughs> occupy. Because we're taking down the 1%. Man. I don't this know. guy coming in hot with 11, <laughs> 11 year old reference. I like it. I don't know. I'm still doing the ice bucket challenge. I'm behind the times. We, so some other slogans I actually because you you said you put it on a rubber band sandwich, you make it taste like a like a po' boy or Probably something. Probably something like that. Yeah. yeah. I said uh, so. Put it on cat meat. It takes the e l out of feline. Turns out just fine. Just fine. That's pretty good. Yeah. And then put it, put it on a put a dash on a po' boy becomes a rich man sandwich. Po- I mean, depending on where you're getting your po' boys, they're <laughs> right. not cheap. Yeah, like 16 bucks now at certain oh, places. I still fucking eat that. Turns, yeah.